SJ plot is a very powerful package which allows us to create very powerful yet simple charts and also some regression analysis results as well. So let's get started. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to create bar charts. So I'm using these packages and I'm putting the options key pen equals 999. This is to switch off the scientific notation. Let's get some data ready and we're using the diamonds data set from the ggplot2 package or library. So this is the data. It has some categorical variables and some numerical variables. So let's get started. You'll be amazed by the power of this package. So all I'm going to do is write one word, which is plot underscore frequency. And this is going to give us a chart like this, which already has the frequency count as well as the percentages. I can write it differently this way and it works also. So when you are in a hurry, you can use SJPlot package to create your charts nicely, but very efficiently. Let's start making some changes. I'm going to change the geometrical size or the, the width of the, of the bars. And you can see that it's changing nicely. To make the charts more meaningful, it is a good practice to sort the bars in ascending or a descending order. So we can easily do that by sort.frequency equals descending or sort.frequency equals ascending. So next I'm going to change the grid dot breaks. I'm putting 1000. So the, the horizontal lines are showing after 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, and 5000. And you can see how it changes nicely. Next, I'm going to change the colors of the, of the bars. And it's a bit tricky to change each bar in a different color, but I'll tell you a, a way to do that as well later on in this video. So those of you who like to use the pipe symbol, you can use this syntax as well. Let's use some themes also. So there are some themes in SA plot, but we can also use the themes from the ggplot2 package. So these are the ggplot2 themes and they work nicely. So in this I'm changing the, the title font size. The title at the bottom, which is the cut, you can see is increasing in size. If you want to change the orientation, you can do that by chord dot flip equals true. Remember how we change the colors by giving red, green, blue. We can also use some built-in palettes also. So there are a lot of pa palettes which are built in in SC plot and I'm making use of those. So how do I know all these names? You can simply type it out. So there's a command called SA plot underscore pals and it gives you all the, the palettes. And that's all I'm using in my in my commands above. So now I'm going to put some titles. So title equals bar chart of cut of diamonds, etc. And then I'm also changing the font size of the title X. Of course, we can make it more customized by changing different titles, labels, etc. So here we go. So allow me to show you another powerful feature of SA plot. In this case, I'm putting all the commands together and I'm changing the labels, the names of the labels which appear at the bottom or, or on the x-axis. Putting the title, putting the title on x-axis and then also changing these cuts like cut one, cut two, cut three, etc. So I'm going to remove these two lines, wrap title, etc. and run it first. So here is our customized chart. You can see the title is up there and the labels on the x-axis have changed. Now let's bring back the wrap title equals five and wrap dot labels equal four. And you will see the effect of these. Suddenly these titles have been wrapped up nicely. And it's a very powerful feature. Now another powerful feature allows us to create multiple charts. In this case, I'm grouping the data by cut and I'm plotting the frequency of the clarity. And you can see that for each cut, it has given us a separate chart. So SA plot basically creates a ggplot2 object. And of course, we can use it to enhance it further. So in this case, I'm passing it to an object called PL and it works nicely. Now I'm going to put some commands from ggplot2 package. For example, I use the theme classic. And next, let's put the commas on the y-axis 
values. So we can do that by scale y continuous labels equals comma and it has worked well. So this is combining the power of sjplot with ggplot2 package. So let's make it a bit more customized. I'm putting some labels on the x-axis as well as on the y-axis. And some titles, subtitle and caption. Now coming back to the question which we raised earlier, how to change the colors of each bar separately? Well, there's a workaround and here it is. But the only limitation is that we can't show the percentages or the frequency in this chart. But if you need that, you can revert to the ggplot2 syntax and this is the ggplot2 syntax for creating a chart which is colored differently and there's also the frequency as well as the numbers being shown. Did you notice that I put legend.position equals none but we still get that legend. How did that happen? Because that was before the theme. So I have to apply the theme first and then do this customization. And you can see that it's working nicely now because I've moved this it after the theme has been applied. So theme BW was applied first and then I changed the position equals none. Now I'm going to show you one of the most powerful features of SJplot. And to appreciate that, let's view the data first. And there's a column called price, which is a numerical quantity. So let's do a quick histogram of that. And I'm also doing the 5 num just to see the distribution. So how do we view this as a bar plot? If I did something like this, then it will be a mistake and you will see why. So you end up with a very, very messy chart. But there's a way to make it much better using SJplot. And here we go. We can cut the price into a suitable band, for example, 1000. So remember that we called a library called SJ Miscellaneous in the beginning. We are making use of that. And using that, I can cut this data into bands of $1000 each. And here is how I'm going to use this feature in our SJplot. So I'm calling this plot frequency and I'm putting this there. And you would see that the chart now looks much better. So at the bottom you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Which doesn't make sense because these are the, the numbers but not the actual labels. And of course we can do the labels. So the axis labels can be replaced by using the group labels command. And you will see that when I run it, you would actually have nice descriptive labels on the x-axis. And you can see that the axis labels have been replaced by nice labels, which makes much more sense. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Thank you very much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.